G'day and get yourselves ready for the big opening day event on November 12th at 30 Aqua Vista Way, San Francisco. Stop mucking about and dive down under and into the server for more details. Are you looking for some of that quality outdoor decor? But you got no freaking idea where to go? Well, come on over to Samurai Aquatics and Decor for all your outdoor decor needs. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Yeah, just delete that. I'm still not ready. Sorry. Got yourself an empty plot of boring virtual real estate in the metaverse, do ya? Or maybe some kind of crappy ramshackle building that, I don't know, needs a bit of extra spunk to it or something. And stop mucking about and get yourself over to Samurai Aquatics Discord to see all our available stock. We've got loads of different decor to spend your pretend money on. We got saunas to fire you up, and ice baths to chew you the fudge out. Literally, stock coming out of our ears. Grills, swings, seating, and more. So much more. And if we don't got it, give us a buzz, and we could probably make it. Get yourself on over to Samurai Aquatics at 30 Aqua Vista Way in Midtown Terrace, San Francisco, Liggety Split, and gorge yourself on outdoor decor. The Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion and interview series brought to you by Metaverse Ventures Entertainment and host Ben 68 and more cheats. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. G'day and welcome to episode 58 of the Wine and Cheese in the Metaverse Show. I'm Ben 68 here with my co-host More Cheese. We are recording on Friday 4th of November for Cheezles, which is Saturday the 5th for me. Ben and I talked Upland Chisel as usual, then something about El- Elrond rebrand. Uh, Matic is going up like a mofo. ZTX will give you free land. UK, not regulated yet on NFTs and fears a crash. DAC crashes the show. NFT royalties, AI alien girls, and lastly, the metaverse explodes. So, yep, get ready to get greasy in an explosive <laughs> diary episode of <laughs> The Worst Show Ever. Why the cheese? Time for why the cheese? The ranger, one's like it's stumps, one's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Talking about the metaverse and NFTs, interviewing all the real crypto geeks. Hello and welcome to the Wine and Cheese in a Metaverse show. This is episode 58. Sorry I'm late. You're not late. We're good. We're okay. This is my co-host with the most, Ben68. I am more cheese. And let's start with the uh, spillage. 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 Yes, so you were just saying that you're... You've been so busy this week, you haven't really kept up to date with what's going on? I haven't. I, I tune into the other podcasts and I just kind of zone out to the voices. I know there's something with a vote. I know there's something with an auction. <laughs> I know there's something with racing. I just don't know the full details. Well, the auction's happening right now as we're recording. Um, I don't mess with any of that. I don't go... I. I killed the FOMO dragon. I'm not chasing FOMO, so yeah, I stay away. I stay away from things like that. So, but yeah, in racing news, other racing news, we had some some major event pop up this week that our friend Dak and everybody at the UCC would obviously be mad excited about, and that is the introduction of multiplayer racing. So what this means now, you can set up your own racetracks. Well, sorry, no, you can't set up your own racetracks. You can set up your own races within the existing racetracks. I believe you can invite up to five other people to race with you, or you can just get involved in, you know, like an online thing where you wait in a list ready to race. That's cool. And there's no um, damage yet to your car, right? No. All right, no, that's good. 
there's no damage, no mileage, nothing like that. It's still all just basically <clears throat> almost alpha testing the whole system. Yeah. However, there is one big major downside to all of this, and it's it's web only. There's no mobile option, so that counts me out completely from the get go. Come on, Shit. old man. Well, sure, I can probably do via Safari. I could probably do it on my phone, but that's just such a pain in the butt. I never do it. If I can't do it in a couple of clicks, well, I've moved on. I'll go and play adventure capitalist instead <laughs> i haven't touched that game in ages i've been too busy back in the woods yeah so it's it's cool again it's one of those things where i think it's like for me personally oh, I, don't, I don't even have a car so i can't even race so i guess i could technically race my truck but my um semi truck but yeah i don't have a car so it's one of those things where yeah it's kind of cool and all but it's really the just the foundation oh you so. can only use a car I believe you can still use your vans and whatever else, but <laughs> you, you're, so just gonna, you're just gonna you're just gonna get smoked by the ones that are the, <laughs> the series one R. So yeah, <laughs> it'd be funny though. I would love to see that. And this is another aspect too. You can apparently now you can spectate, so you can watch some races as they unfold. You so. could sit on the street, eat some like metaverse Cheetos, drink some metaverse diet Pepsi. Yeah, so it says, uh, well, basically it's, this is all playing out just as the UCC, I'm, I keep saying UCC, sorry, the URL, Upland Racing League, um, just as their site, they kind of set up for it. it's all playing out exactly as they planned, so it's pretty cool. And I believe Dak is actually in the, the um, live stream for the auction right now. He's cool. talking about cars and racing and stuff too. So I might check that out on the on the back side. So, yeah, it's got a, the list of cars that are available in the auction that's happening now. So, yes, yeah, Series 1, Series 2, Series oh, 4. Oh, wow. Um, mint num all Mint number 3. So I imagine they'll probably go – I can't imagine they'll go for anything less than maybe 800. I could see those easily pushing up over oh, to the Oh, yeah. Mins. I think I – think they'll get anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred. Yeah. So we shall see. Yeah, that's what's been happening in the racing. Uh the other major upload news as you said is they recently put out um a post on Reddit about this upcoming vote for the economy. I'll wait till this loads up. So hello Uplanders a few months back we detailed our plans to propose an up updated funding mechanism for the upland pool currently we're making the final preparations to initiate this vote in app for all kyc users with a designated home address before we get there though we wanted to give the community an opportunity to share their comments and questions so it outlines in a bit more details what it's all about and then a whole bunch of people who have way more time on the hands than i do have you know put some great counter arguments for against in here I will say that with any of these things, the vast majority of the people who are replying are people who I think it's a terrible idea. Um, that That's <coughs> just human nature to do that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, if you haven't checked that out, get on over and check that out. If you haven't KY, if you're in Upland and you haven't KYC'd and got a home address, then if you want to be involved in this vote, you better get on to that lickety split too. I have one thing to say. I yep. see I see both sides of it <clears throat> from from either side. Um I just wish there were more options like if you don't feel it it's a good thing to get from the community pool um how would this be instead? How would this be instead or what are your suggestions for us to receive an income? rather than going into the community pool sort yeah. of thing. They, we can have um, um, executive only purchases, like like stuff like that. Like, I don't know. I just feel like there, there should be more options. It shouldn't just be like, do this or don't. <laughs> it's, exception, it's exceptionally binary. It's basically going to be down to yes or no, which is fair enough. You know, they've put the information out there. They've given everyone the opportunity to debate it, pros and cons. My biggest, um, like, I know exactly how I'm going to vote and I know why I'm going to vote that way. But my 
biggest kind of concern is something that popped up. Um, somebody asked, let me see if I can find it. Where did I put it? Somebody asked, um, uh, it's actually Nick A420. He asked within that Reddit post, regarding voting itself, will there be a live count for us to keep track? I think that the more transparency, the better. A lot of companies use this kind of mechanism to force an opinion on their community. And then when everything goes wrong, they can blame it on the community's vote. Secondly, will there ever be the possibility for players to vote on what they think should be on oh, that something else? So basically he's asked, are we going to be able to see the voting stats live? You know, if I, I would assume it's the same in, this, in America where, you know, if you think of the, what we have here is our elections over there, you've got the presidential elections or whatever. It's like on the news and you see the vote tally being tracked live. Um, we've seen this before with a lot of the competitions, like the Halloween event that we just had, you could see the stats. Like we could see that Portage Park was um, up top and we could see that yeah. uh, the Bella Rose node was catching up and that sort of thing. Um, General Mort had replied to that and he said, for this type of vote, we will not be showing the results until the vote at, has concluded. That's... That's I don't think that's an greasy. American thing. I think that's just an upland thing. Because no, I'm saying the American thing is that you can see the votes being tracked. Oh, like if you have your like, presidential election, they don't yeah, just Yeah, but that has nothing to say, do with this. Well, it's it's voting. I mean, how do you how do you have a vote on something and then everybody votes and then you just get the result and that's it? No, I if, agree with you. There should be transparency, but I don't think yeah. that's like an American <laughs> type. American... Like, I don't see how it, like no other no other country shows transparency while voting. No, we we got our wires crossed. I use the American example as as transparency. When you have the presidential election, or same in Australia, when we have the our elections here, they show that the yeah. votes being being updated live. That's, that's what I meant for the American side. This is a system where, you know, democratic countries that are used to voting, we're used to seeing transparency as the votes are being tallied. Yeah. But for Mort to come out and say, we will not be showing the results until the vote has concluded. That's uber greasy. I just don't know why they would pursue that path. I know. It's like, it's like, <clears throat> I could see both sides, but who cares about the other side when there isn't any kind of other options? I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going to kind of like plead the fifth on this one. <laughs> well, you, you know what this is going to do to all the fudsters out there and, you know, all the people that get in hysterics that they're not going to accept that no matter what the outcome, they're going to say it's rigged. So it's bizarre. And I think it's kind of very strange that, Upland is kind of pushing towards decentralization, but if they're doing it on a foundation of closed doors and no transparency, it does there's something something amiss there. Uh, I don't know. That's that's my only take on it. But yes, make sure you do get in and have your say. You Wait, know. it's like that old man from Family Guy who wants Chris to dig in his pocket for money for the paper paper boy. But instead, like, there's something else there. I don't know the reference specifically, but <laughs> apparently Paper it's a good boy. one. No, oh. you don't know the, the greasy old man pedophile. I, I get what you're saying, but I, I right. don't know from the show. But, yeah. Yeah, so I think the vote's an important <laughs> one to have. I, I just, for me, the, the lack of transparency in the telling of the votes is just crazy. Yeah, like, they need way more transparency. It needs to be user friendly and there needs to be more options. There there can't just be a yes or no. There has to be a conversation. There has to be, okay, you don't like this. Tell us why you don't like it. And what would you suggest otherwise? Yeah, it just feels like because it's so binary and there's no transparency, the decision's already been made. They're just humoring us. So yeah we'll see how it pans out but other than that yeah i haven't been doing much in the upland itself just been getting ready for opening day of samurai aquatics and you know i've been going gangbusters on getting those last what is now 58 builds done in midtown terrace so nice now we did say on i don't know if we said on the udu podcast or maybe it was just in our samurai aquatic server that we were going to sneaky peeky 
We aren't just making old wood people. <laughs> who said that? Uh, somebody who should know better. Let's just put it that way. There's one um, person. I, I, I haven't heard it, and I'm usually in the grapevine, so that person is probably just talking to themselves. Well, you know how rumors start. They always start with one person, so we're trying to slap that rumor. We're, we're going to slap that rumor. <laughs> Inside joke. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try and time this. So here's an example. Um, DTEC has been working away to put up some extra concept pieces. This is just an example of the seating with fire pit. Um, if you're listening Ooh. on the Spotify, you will want to get yourself over onto the YouTube to check this out. So yeah, there's a few different options. So no, we're not only doing old wooden style stuff. And we want to give people the ability to really kind of customize their node. Like if you, if you want to have you know, creepy look, if you want to have a futuristic look, if you want to have a campy look like like you're, you're uh, rustic and you're in the woods, or if you want to have that clown uh, carnival type look, you know, and these are just kind of things we're working on. Like none of this is set in stone. So like, yeah, it's, yeah. I don't know. We're, ju we're just having fun with this. We're having a lot of fun with this. All right, take it down yeah. before someone copies us. <laughs> <laughs> and that's only that's only like half a dozen of i don't know what did we say however many options we're going to do so yeah and dtex going crazy he's like <laughs> yes so yeah we're still pushing ahead for uh november 12th is going to be the release date and um i have to talk with you sometime probably just after this goes live tomorrow if we get some time i'm going to put five five of each up in the showroom as a bit of a test i'll give the how long did it take you to fly to san francisco what's the longest flight maybe an hour or something yeah about an hour 50 something so minutes I'll, I'll give everybody in the in the summer aquatic server i'll put a blast out um we're selling 10 items in one hour All right. and then it's just going to be first in breath best dress um obviously and then the second risk. one is the same 10 um, it'll only be, it'll be five of each and I'll, I'll just be doing it. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Ben's doing the slot. old face. So it'll be like, wait, um, wait, you... thumbs up, 10 items up. Wait, 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 thumbs up because you, you froze. You froze for a while. So you said you're only going to put 10 and then go on. Yeah, only putting 10. So five of each type, sitting with table, sitting with fire pit. All right. Just going to put, going to put five each up. Just to test how I how fast I can do the UI and how it plays out, and that's it. Um, if you're there and you grab one, great. If you miss out, um, stick and this around is for, for November the twelfth. Um, oh, this, this is, is before. For, this is just a test. This is a test. Yes. Oh, yes. all right, cool. So that's wait. When is this going to happen? Tomorrow, like just after this video goes live, probably. I'll mm -hmm. see how I go. I've got a bunch of family stuff that we need to organize, but yeah. Because um, we did have, we had Finsky and Goldie helped us test out the reservation system and we got a lot of informa important information from that. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be the same with with this little mini test because because it's su such a laborious task to list it in the UI. Um, yeah, I'm just going to have to see how it goes. And it it's, seems to be like after I press um, yes for sale list, it's kind of, you know how it takes three minutes on the blockchain or something? Like if you go to build a property. There seems yeah. to be a bit of a lag there. So I just want to test that whole system. All right. So hopefully we'll get a few folks that, that uh, we are in contact with who can, you know, screen record and do screenshots and this, that, and the other thing. What are you squirreling on? I'm going to see if my transaction, the Polygon, went through. Oh, yes. I'm either going to have a really... All right. Well, while you're getting that sorted out, I'll get up our first article that we're going to dive into. Now, we've got a whole bunch today, so we'll try and just kind of skim over them. Oh, I can close that down. So this first one, have you ever heard of Elrod or Elrond? Elrond? No. So we got here. Elrond rebrands as Multiverse X shifts focus to the metaverse. 
the blockchain developer announced it will transform its multiverse X as it shifts focus on metaverse development and introduces three new products. Huh. So that that's the first thing I said. Well, what the hell is Elrond? Oh, so, Hubbard. That's, that's exactly <laughs> what I thought too. <laughs> so I, I jumped over to their website here. It's Elrond.com, E-L-R-O-N-D.com. So the internet scale blockchain is live. I mean, this, at first glance, this seems like a very basic kind of ICO website from the 2017s. You got it? Yes. Yes. yes nice. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I'm so sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> so yes, Elrond. Um, you know it's got staking and all sorts of stuff. Like I said, I haven't dove into this myself. Um, but again, like I looked at their website and didn't really answer any questions. What the hell is Elrond? So I dug a little bit further and went over to Coin Market Cap. Uh, every single one of these is going to reload, and I looked at the price straight away. Elrond the the um, ticker is EGLD, $60.15, and we're in the full-on bear market. So I was like, well, what the hell's this? Um, oh, it's going to go back to that stupid chart. I hate those charts. So you've, you've, this is not on your radar at all? Never heard of it? No. No, uh, same. I'm not going to be able to see that. Let's go so to the what weekly. Is it, what has it got? A, what's, it, what's, what's it about? Well, this is why I like coin market cap because it always gives a um a little overview. So what is Elrond? Elrond is a blockchain protocol that seeks to offer extremely fast transaction speeds by using sharding. The project describes itself as a technology ecosystem for the new internet, which includes fintech, decentralized finance, and the internet of things. Its smart contracts execution platform is reportedly capable of 15,000 transactions per second, six second latency and a 0.001 dollar transaction costs uh blah 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 egld allows developers to dis deploy smart contracts protocols and dApps on the platform and empowers participants to perform any network action through staking and validation rewards as well as transaction fees egald manages the elrond network blah 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 blah, blah. so it's kind of a updated Ethereum or something like that, I guess. Oh, really? Yeah, I was yeah. having freaking. Uh, my my I was switching today with Ethereum gas prices. Yes, max supply thirty one only mm -hmm. thirty one million coins. That's quite interesting. Um, it came out the gates in what august 2020 31st of august at about 18 dollars had a high of about 425 dollars and is now down to like i said 60 dollars. oh wow not financial advice do your own research but i think i'm gonna grab one or two of these just to I'm sit on dip your toe just to sit on but yes going back to this news article so whatever this Elrond is, is rebranding itself to focus on the metaverse. So let's see what it says here. Um, sure. It will redefine itself as a new brand with a focus on the metaverse. Formerly, no formerly known as Elrond, the company <laughs> will move forward under the new name Multiverse X. Oh. With the introduction of three new metaverse products, X Fabric, X Portal, and X Worlds. Interesting. The tools include a metaverse portal, digital assets holder, creator utilities, and a deployable blockchain module. Um, Benjamin Minsu, the CEO of Elrond, co commented to Cointelegraph saying that the new rebranding will benefit both digitally and phys digital and physical reality. In quotes, we are now in the position to create a large path towards growth adoption and utility for the real world and the metaverse. So, so this is, is this... like a nerd article. And it's kind of like it's doing the blockchain equivalent of what my old mate Zuck has done with <laughs> Facebook and that whole social thing. So it's interesting. Multiverse yeah. X says it plans to continue to build off the community and groundwork that Elrond Network has already put in place, such as the existing technologies in the ecosystem, blah, 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 blah. 
it's new. So it's basically like a like a new way to code and if you want to create like a metaverse and stuff in there. Yeah, and making dApps and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. All right. Yeah, because I yeah. hear like Ethereum is the best to work with for coders and and whatnot. So if that's this probably, is that's probably just the case that it's been around the longest. Yeah. I would imagine. But yeah, it's certainly not the easiest to work with from a um a user perspective. No, <laughs> absolute pain in the butt. Yeah. No, it's not. So yeah, we'll have to. I'm definitely going to keep an eye on this one myself. And I, I did check out the um the Australian exchange where I buy my crypto from, and it does have Elrond on there. So yeah, I think I'm going to do a little little hodl bag, just see where it ends up. Oh, Lord, not, in, not investing more than I'm willing to lose. Yada yada yada. Yeah. All right, yeah, every single one of these. Now, speaking of Matic, you had your own little <laughs> yes. kerfuffle with Matic. Look, yes, after I us spent this. all of it now on a project. But, yeah, I got in under 80 cents, and now it's like, what, 115? Yeah, so it says here the heading uh, after it just got popped up. Matic jumps 20% in a day after Instagram Polygon NFT minting reveal. Matic nice. is pumping this month in the wake of Reddit surging Polygon NFTs and Instagram Polygon integration. Uh, did you want to give us the head up, heads up on your little journey with Polygon Matic this morning <laughs> or are we keeping that under wraps? Oh, no, your, no, no. I, I um, was. certainly like I am in a project with Mass and uh, Dak and um, another gentleman, Adamus, and we're the four founders of our guild in Avalon Druid. They, Marius was on Wine and Cheese before to talk about it. And, you know, we're just getting our uh, estate established. Um, I got my, the person I'm going to play with. We just got our houses. I was in the process of buying the house now, but what I did was I transferred from my <clears throat> my money market to Matic ERC instead of Matic Polygon. So then I had to go to the bridge and swap it. And then I didn't have any ETH. So I had to buy some ETH and transfer it over just for the gas. The gas prices weren't that bad, actually. They were really mm. good, which is weird, but I'm grateful for that. But yeah, that went all that all went through and I'm just now, just, you, you're experienced in the space and you still had that kerfuffle. So we're yes. a long way from mass adoption, you know. I had imagine, to Google a lot <laughs> to figure imagine this Uncle out. Imagine John Uncle John and Auntie Nora trying to figure that out. You no, know, it's, um, they wouldn't. Yeah. They wouldn't. So, yes, that is a couple of nice big fat green candles there. Was it 87 cents? And, yeah, up to a dollar sixteen at the moment. Hoo -hoo. What do you reckon? You're going to pump further or are you going to catch a falling knife? I'm going to catch a falling knife. I already have over a thousand shares, but now they're kind of like invested again in this project. Yeah. So I'm double invested. Hopefully this is, uh, yeah. 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 Just we'll see. not that I'm much of a, a chart reader, but I, I'd expect that's going to get a big fat red one down back under a dollar at some stage. So well, we I mean, it could head and shoulders. Like you see the first one on top, you see the shoulder yeah. um, uh, to the left. Yep. Left. Yeah. Uh, oh, here. That, that's a shoulder and then the head yep. and then another yep. shoulder and then down. This could yep. be like another head and then mm. shoulder and then down. Interesting. Yes. Yeah, so. And check that one out. I'll go back to the article. Let's see what it says here. So Polygon, yeah, we know what that is. Um, maybe this is just <laughs> I read that an Ethereum side chick. <laughs> Polygon, <laughs> an Ethereum side chick, an Ethereum side chain. Yes. <laughs> Matic is required to pay for the gas fees on the network. Polygon's gas fees are very low, but still required for transactions. Sometimes NFTs can be bought with Matic as well, which is what you just did. Um, 
allowing traders to avoid the process of bridging or wrapping Ethereum or searching for a crypto exchange that will sell wrapped Ethereum natively on Polygon. So yes. Yeah. But here we go. Yeah. This is what this is what was behind the the pump. But Instagram's NFT minting feature is a big deal. Last year, CNBC reported that Instagram has over 2 billion monthly users. That means a lot of potential traffic for the Polygon network. Creators yeah. on Instagram have the opportunity to engage with fans and monetize through Polygon-powered digital collectibles in a watershed moment for both the creator economy and Web3. Yep. So, yes, good things ahead. Earlier this year, we announced a digital uh, display partnership with Meta. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> oh, because Meta is the owner of Instagram, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, so while, while my mate Zach might be losing a few dollars on Facebook, maybe he's about to cash in on Instagram. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe this is his wake-up call. Like, maybe he's going to be like, oh should you know go this way and like blah 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 yeah oh. and here we got here according to a june analytics dashboard nearly three hundred nine thousand polygon nfts were sold on OpenSea in october in contrast more than 1.1 million nfts were sold on ethereum's mainnet on OpenSea last month so yeah i like those jackets on the right side were you jacket are hunting you? those are cool no i don't even own a jacket <laughs> I live in Australia. I'm a tough man. Rawr. <laughs> I'd sweat my balls off if I was wearing a jacket. Wait, don't you guys get like 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 weird cold fronts or something? Yeah, for like two hours in the morning. All right. Yeah, and this it's different. Like it's same here, like in the States. If you go down to Melbourne or Tasmania, then yeah, you'll freeze your ass off down there, but not oh. where I live. Oh, so you're very similar to Arizona then because if we go up like two hours to Flagstaff, they got snow there. Yeah. And we never get snow. Yeah, well, it's a lot more than two hours. I'd have to drive probably 12 hours to get to snow. How? Yeah. Australia's a big place. The most yeah. I've driven when I left one job in Victoria and I moved to Cairns for another job, that was 42 hours driving. Holy shit. Yes. It's a long way. <laughs> wow. Like we used to drive from New York down to Florida sometimes to go to Disney World because we couldn't afford both airplane and <laughs> tickets. So uh, we got in a van and whatever. We drove down there and that was like a 26 hour drive. Yep. So that's crazy. Yes. And I, I did that. I did that trip more times than I'd like to count, which is why I hate driving now. Um, yeah. And it's the reason why I work five minutes from home because even that drive pisses me off. I got no patience <laughs> for driving. Yes. Anyhow. All right. Let's see what we got next. We're racing through these. This is good. It's going might be a nice, quick, short show. No, no, forever. No. We're going to be on here forever. Forever. Here's another one. <laughs> This is on newsbtc.com. ZTX upcoming launch of metaverse based home NFT sale upends the industry blueprint. Have you heard of ZTX? I have Where'd not. You go? Are we getting all of these little projects coming out of the woodwork? So it says here ZTX, a web Wait, free I initiative. See it. You're not sharing. Ha! <laughs> worst show ever <laughs> i love it though people love it it's fine worst show ever let's try again i gotta scroll back up to we're that not picture. showing off we're just being us take two i'll edit that out on the no, back no don't end. edit that out we don't edit we don't edit it was here a joke. It was okay a joke. all right all right i'm sorry i don't edit look at i got angry i got look at that i got i came in hot i'm sorry about that it's all good. <laughs> CTX's upcoming launch of metaverse based home NFT sale upends the industry blueprint. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. So, yes, yeah, CTX, a Web3 initiative on Zepito, widely recognized as Asia's largest, largest metaverse platform. Excuse me. Now, get this with over 340 million registered users. I saw that. 
So Zepito, Asia's largest metaverse platform, has over 340 million registered users. And here, I wonder how many of those are daily actives, but still, that is in, an insane number. On Solana. Oh. Yes, it has announced its home NFT launch. Built on the Solana network, the project aims to create an immersive 3D open world where people can build, play, and earn valuable crypto assets and collectibles. Does any of that sound familiar? Mm -hmm. While participating in fun, exciting, and entertaining virtual experiences. The project is an important one with the rapidly expanding metaverse world. It promises to onboard new audiences and bring new users into the folds of Web3 internet and the blockchain-based cryptocurrency space. Do you think these people, but it's Solana, but I mean, oh, yeah. they'll probably be open. I'm like, I'm wondering if there's a possibility because this is Web3. Like, do you awesome. think there's a, like, uh, does it have anything to do with Animoca or? Well, look, they're look partnering with Magic Eden. Look over here. <gasps> Premium partners, Upland is there. How the frick did I miss that? It's right in my face. Huge. I Large don't know if, charge. I don't know if that is an ad for this. Oh, oh. buddy. Wait, because it's again. on the. Premium because partners. Yeah. I don't know what this refers to, but it is there. So maybe we should read on. Yeah, let's read on. Let's read on. Important partnerships. To turbocharge the initiative, Zepito X is partnering with Magic Eden, which is the largest Solana-based NFT marketplace. Such launches are usually accompanied by a virtual land sale, but ZTX is bypassing that convention and has instead opted to offer virtual land for free Whoa. to anyone who registers and claims land on the platform. Can we do that now? Like not now, but after the show? I think we Or this hasn't started yet. Or has started. Right. Let's keep reading. <laughs> However, to ensure that early backers are fairly rewarded, ZTX plans to conduct a home NFT sale in which 4,000 unique 3D rendered home NFTs will be up for grabs. Each home will come with in-game utility and will, pro and will provide its owner with boosts to their economic activity and asset production within the ZTX virtual world, along with priority access to the new updates and features. The sale is expected to go live on the Magic Eden Marketplace in December. December. Wow. This is interesting. Yeah. So you're not buying. So in contrast to Upland, where you buy vacant lots of land and then you need to buy or play to earn the, the token spark to build and then you build a property but there's zero utility at present or very little utility at present this project is selling is selling 3d homes on the land with in-game in utility good to go now mm. what kind of utility will they provide Let's have a look. Why home NFTs? All of this begs the question, why home NFTs and not land parcels? Well, there you go. That's exactly what we've asked, like all other Metaverse projects. Unfortunately, although land sales are an effective way for Metaverse initiatives to raise capital and fuel growth, the speculative manner in which they are priced acts as a barrier to entry for the average person because of the prices. I assume that's what they're saying. This then limits the number of users who can join and participate in new metaverse projects, leaving only institutional investors and large well-funded companies, hello Sandbox, as the ultimate owners and majority landholders of new projects, even though these projects are aimed at a wide egalitarian user base. Yeah, that's basically their, they're doing this at Sandbox. <laughs> yes. To counter this issue... Land will be free in the ZTX metaverse. It will unlock core features of the platform's gameplay and will serve as a base for home NFTs. Old mate, while explaining the rationale for using home NFTs instead of land, said, we are building a metaverse for all. With mass adoption in mind, we must create a place in which users can participate without having to worry about the hefty price tag of speculative land. It should be a place that users can call home. So we made that a reality for them. All right, so now, the but here's the thing. Yeah. If there's not a quantity max of land, the land is going to be virtually valueless. 
the land is free, so the land has no value, but you're going to buy the house that's going to go on top of the land, and then that will give it the the value and the utility. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the house could go for crazy bucks. Yeah, it seems like it's not. It's it's just the same. It's the same if, thing by a different name. If it sounds, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. If it sounds too good to be true, someone's wanking your tail, yanking your. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Magic oh <my> Eden <laughs> co-founder and COO, old mate, <laughs> echoed these sentiments. Um, in quotes, powered by Solana and with access to our large audiences of 10 million users. We are thrilled that ZTX is holding its Genesis Home Mint on our launch pad. By providing ZTX players and homeowners with the ability to find artistic expression, connect with others and play games, we are providing real value, real value added to all, end quotes. So that's interesting. So I actually like this, you know, they're giving the, the land away for free, but it sounds like they're going to have a wide ver variety of options to buy for the housing. So there's probably a whole bunch of different styles of housing. Um, you know, there will obviously be different price points and that sort of thing. I'm going to play devil's advocate to you. I don't like this at all. Like I want everything I own to have value. If I buy yeah. the land, I know that it's going to have va value because I purchased it for a specific price. Like, I don't know. Maybe I'm not like, I just want to know how much all my assets cost and the value as it goes up and down. This well, makes me nervous. You're getting the land for free. So you can't really expect it to have value, but it, it's probably, you know what? It's probably going to be a case where like um, take Midtown Terrace in, in um, Upland, for example, I, I minted most of those and same for yourself. We minted those for like 10 bucks, but because of the, the houses we've built on that, because of the ecosystem we've built around it. Now, every block of, of cheap land, the value is 10 X more than 10 X. It's like 20, 30 X. Yeah. But I like the fact that it costs money because yeah. it prevents other people from kind of coming into our block right away. Mm. I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be they have its pros and cons, but it'll never, in my eyes, compete with Upland. Well, let's have a look here. It says every gener Genesis Home NFT will be customizable and will come with immersive in-game assets that can be placed on land parcels owned, owned by the user. Players will be able to enter homes, decorate rooms, use their homes as NFT galleries, and even host gatherings and virtual social meetups with their friends. This is this is very very interesting. Is Upland at risk here? If like something, what do they say? Three hundred and forty users or something. If something like this goes mainstream, is that just going to completely take the wind out of Upland sales? Like, All right. Well, you have to think of it this way. This is something from China, right? It's Asia. It didn't specify. Oh, it didn't yeah, specify. Maybe... No. Let me. I'll see if there's a link there. Yeah. Keep talking um a lot of people are kind of iffy on that if this came from like somewhere like south korea or japan i think they would be more to kind of jump on the wagon but with all the stuff that's going on in china um i don't know like it could be a competitor but at the same time like they're they're offering all these new things. How soon are they going to provide them? Where we have seen Upland kind of work through each and every element. Um, they made their promises; they're fulfilling them. Like, are these things already static in this game, or are they upcoming? Yeah, promises. Uh, it says here I'm looking at a thing. Zepto is an avatar builder from South Korean app developer. All right, so yeah, then they have an issue. <laughs> because yeah. i would look into it, it now more so way. since it's from south korea yeah i mean if you're if you're trying to sell a product and upland is selling a product where you have to do all of this stuff you have to buy all of this stuff and put in all of this effort to build a house and then utility like like it says here like in-house functionality in nft galleries is coming sometime in the unknown future 
And there's another product where that's all good to go and works straight out the gate. I don't know. But then the, the co-founder name, that's that is a Chinese name. Yeah, but like, all right, so I'm not a I'm not we're not against people, we're against the country. Like like as if to say, like, don't blame me for my president, sort of thing. Right. Oh, so I don't I don't care if it's it's individuals, but if it's from a specific country, yeah, it's a little more iffy. But no, yeah, yeah. Like I I'm more than fine if it's, you know, that way. But well wasn't didn't we there was a wine and cheese article where we we talked about I remember I did the thumbnail, it was an eagle and a Chinese dragon and it was gonna rip the metaverse in two. So it's going to be all very interesting how it plays out. Um, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see if there's any kind of roadblocks. Like if we went to register for this, if there's going to be roadblocks because we're not in that kind of that ecosystem or something. Shall be some interesting. But yeah, I think this is this is very interesting. And I, I wish I knew what this premium partners over here refers to because it does say upland there it's interesting it is that's just a clickable link nexus token private sale yeah it might be just to do with this ad here i'm not sure um read the the chat message i just sent you <laughs> i think zoe kind of opened up a new in in here not in in um discord <laughs> um and <laughs> not not from the middle right maybe well next... we just kind of wrapped up on that article so if he wants to jump in, oh really it. all right yeah. that's yeah. cool yeah. now is the time because we did refer to dak he'll be able to give us the the goss on how the auction went so no that'll this be good true here we all go right. so yeah I, I think this just to wrap up wrap up on this yeah something like this that's going to come with such a massive massive like 340 million registered users that's kind of insane maybe i'll i'll risk getting hacked and i'll click on that uh oh zeppy tool normally i don't click on live links i do a background check well it's in english so that's a good start zeppy tool That's so cute. I like their avatars. They're so pretty and cute. World of Wonder. I oh can't my gosh. Scroll. Why can't I scroll? Um, so if you're listening on Spotify, we're just looking at the Zepito platform. Uh, that's Korean writing there. That's Korean. So yeah, maybe it is. Or maybe it's, maybe it's all of the above. No, here we go. Look. News career at Korea, career at US. Hmm. You know, this kind of reminds me of a Roblox Sims. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say the same thing. The way they've set that this out with all the um this looks the amazing, thumbnails. actually. I think you might be right. <laughs> like they have so many options here. Yeah, there's wow. all sorts of different things. Yeah, prison escape has the same the same Look at games. This. Look at this stuff. Apartment XQ. Sanctuary. This kind of looks like like Lux. Remember Lux? Yeah, absolutely. Look mm. at that. <laughs> well, I think after we get wrapped up on the show, we definitely have to check this out, I think. Yeah. So link is in the description. All right. What's where did he go? I don't know. We had him, we lost him. I was just about to throw it over to him. I was going to say, look what the cat dragged in. All right. Must have pressed the wrong button. Um, I'm just looking too. That's, it seems to be there's some tie up with Xbox and Zepito. Oh, really? Appears to be, yeah. I don't know. That, that just all sounds very interesting to me. All right. Do we know what's happening with the DAC man or should we move on? Well, let's move on and he'll just jump in when he can.
All right, next one. UK lawmakers open inquiry into NFT regulation. There are fears that the bubble may burst. Really? You worried that your bubble's going to burst? No, I think this is just the beginning. Doesn't a bubble have to be going for a while? Hasn't it already burst? Like if you look at the that's true the prices of eight coins and that. Oh, that's true. But you know, I would I would think that the, you know if you look at any of the charts of some of those big NFT things, it's it's all it's all dropped. Oh, I have got the wrong article. I don't know, does stuff like that worry you? No. Why not? I don't know because all right, so it's not it's not all right, yeah, of course it's something that's new and anything new should be scary, but at the same time, it hasn't really begun yet. Like NFTs. I don't know what they're referring to. Maybe they're referring to games or things like, like uh, if, they, if they're referring to ownership type NFTs like that have so much more to go forward, then they're, they're being ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, th this is kind of my whole take you know, this is my take on things that I'm super cautious about tax and that sort of stuff. It's because of this. Oh, it yeah. says here, NFT regulation in the UK is largely non-existent with lawmakers planning to assess the assets ahead of a review by the Treasury Department. So, yeah, it's all a bit tricky. Yeah, that's part that scares everybody. So... Uh, the United Kingdom's Digital, Cultural, Media and Sport Committee have opened an inquiry to hear from the public on the potential benefits and risks of NFTs and blockchain on the country's economy. In a November 4 announcement, the DCMS Committee said its inquiry is related to the sudden growth of the NFT market, responding to fears the assets may be overvalued and a risk of bubble bursting. Yeah. Uh. So you, they're saying that once regulation comes, people are going to jump out of NFTs, lickety split. Or are they trying to get it in where they're trying to get the regulation in to under the guise of protecting people from a bubble? Hmm. I don't know. Regulators are going to regulate. That's what they do. Yeah. So we'll see. All right. That's not very interesting. What's far more interesting is we have... The cat's dragged something in. What's the cat dragging? Mr. Dak. Dak's on the scene. on Dak. We got the Dak machine. Hello. <laughs> we are just talking about you before. We were saying that you were, as we started recording, that you were probably over live in the car auction. I was. It was great. Ooh. How'd it we go? Were, how'd it go? We were speculating on the prices. What did, what did you end up at? I didn't, it was way out of my price range. So the cheapest was 470 for an R2, uh, for a two. You so the basic there. two. Mm. Uh, and then the semi truck was a yellow uh, E semi was the last one. And uh, who was it that won it? Like last second beat out uh, Abdullah. That was, that was interesting. Mm. How much did that go for? 2.3. That wow. sounds right. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yeah right. semi trucks are expensive. <clears throat> nice. Wow. But it all worked. That's the main thing. I know they've had a lot of trouble with the the bot and that sort of stuff. Yeah, actually, there was a, um, X1 reached out and was like, we might not be able to do the auction today, but then they got it working and Nice. They 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 had images up. It, it worked really well. Cool. And yeah. at the start of the at the start of the show too, we kind of looked at the the new um, information that we got about multiplayer racing, and we were saying that that was right down the URL's alley as far as spectators and organized racing and that sort of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. No. And and actually, we talked a little bit about that during the auction. Uh, you know. Things like, what does it mean for URL? How do uh, players take advantage of it? What kind of tips would I have for people who want to get into racing and so forth? Um, you know, one of the things I mentioned is 
coordination seems to be a difficult uh, the challenge for folks, right? So now you have the, the lobbies, but what we're hearing and seeing is people are having a hard time coordinating, getting on the race and getting the person who started the lobby to start the race and so forth. And so my recommendation is for all of the uh, neighborhood projects and the nodes and so forth to set up threads in their racing channel on their server where people can jump into those threads and say, okay, I'm going to start a race. I'm jumping on a race. We'll do R1s or whatever it is and kind of coordinate to, through threads in Discord. If you don't have a server to do that in, you can always do it in URL. Hmm. Uh, even though it may not be the, your track. So, for example, you may not be able to race on your track, Ben. You could still coordinate with other people to race on one of the tracks. They yeah. also did the, uh, they also raced on Portage Park's new track. It's already made. It's already made and up and out. And it it was not the Portage Park did not get a chance to submit. They had no input at all. That's that's a shame. Uh, That's a shame. That's they wanted to get it out fast, and so there was a lot of huh? Why? What? What? What was the? What was the rush? Well, Well, they wanted to have something to show today during the auction and so forth. Uh, There also was a question of. How would they get to submit, you know, because it's a community, right? And so would they, would everyone on the community submit tracks and then would they be bombarded with too many tracks and so forth? Now with Portage Park, it just works out that they have a mayor that represents them, right? So they could have just talked to him about it. Uh, And then I did remind them that, you know, a lot of these communities have sanctioned URL tracks that they would be happy to submit. Decentralize my tush. It's not even about like submitting tracks. It's just about having a conversation. Like there's some key points that most neighborhoods would want. Like, you know, in Midtown Terrace, we got Aqua Vista Way or we know in Portage Park, there's key areas like um, six corners and all that sort of stuff Um, to not even have a conversation. That that just seems like a missed opportunity. Yeah. And then uh, Russell was on the auction and uh, it just it's a contest track. And so he's like, can we please name it Portage Park? So, you know, but again, the idea is I think that they're trying to get things out. They're trying to show different uh, options and so forth. And it's not going to be perfect right off the bat. But the fact that we now can race multiplayer and so forth is great. Um, Another question that was asked was, you know, with Upex World and what we just did with Creedmoor, would this replace that or how would this work and so forth? And the idea was good news is we can still do invitationals. We can still have layer two. What Upix World created for Creedmoor is very different than anything you're going to experience in Upix and in Upland, right? Yeah. Uh, you're not going to have ghosts flying through the track in Upland, right? It's going to be very traditional. And so you'll still be able to do those types of layer two kinds of experiences where it's a little different than what Upland does. Uh, so I think you, you know, we'll still do that. Obviously, we're also very excited about being able to race in Upland. It's always been one of my uh, things about being able to use Layer One and, and to its fullest uh, advantage. But then being able to do Layer Two uh, stuff is is really cool. <clears throat> yeah, I saw. Uh, we, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, the other thing we talked about too is the RNG. Working with Upix World and working with the team to try to implement RNG. It turns out skill base is actually so much easier to implement. And so the fact that Upland went, you know, stuck to their guns and really went with RNG kind of shows a commitment to building out an economic model versus a game. Hang on a minute. You you said skill based was far easier. Did you mean RNG was easier? No. Skill. You can actually literally put together a track and race in like hours. With, mm. with skill base because you don't have to worry about any engine or any um, any physics or any AI, AI or anything like yeah. that, right? And so with RNG, you actually have to incorporate a lot more coding. Uh, I mean, I was talking to someone about putting in a physics engine so that we can actually kind of incorporate, you know, some of the elements of how uh, acceleration and braking works and so forth, right? I mean, RNG and having it fully computerized is actually a lot of work. It's actually easier for players to just hit their W key and A and D 
and move it back and forth. Yeah. So let's you don't do have that. To worry I'd about rather do that. Someone else. Yeah, I'd rather no. do that. I'd rather I'd rather grind and get my skills up and race like that. Like I'm gonna be honest, I'm a gamer. I don't want to just sit there and 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 do RNG. I hate RNG. Um yeah. personally. I if it's it. huh? It. Your voice is really low. Um, yeah, your mic is like blah, blah. I love there it. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, watch, I was wait I uh, cuz I stopped cuz he was talking. Um I was watching the uh UPX podcast last night and TML posted his um the racetrack with all the the ghosts and and the hand and this and that and you were able to actually race it, right? Yeah, like that's what I want basically. If if and it's it's cool that Upland does the, the whole RNG thing, but I'm most likely going to be in UPX world racing that way. I guess it's good to give people a choice, but I hate RNG. If you're going to get destroyed, if your car is going to get destroyed and you're going to race for skills, like they said in the beginning, what's the point of RNG then? What's the point of getting well, your skills Because up? they still build up your block explorer. Your, for what your, reason? Your, the abilities, they, right? So... It's like experience, right? Take your character and you're building up your experience and putting it into attributes and stuff like that, right? But what the will the attributes concept. do if it's RNG, Dak? They modify the, R <laughs> the RNG. It's modifiers, right? You played D&D, &D, well, maybe you didn't, but if you've ever played D&D &D or anything like that or in, in different video games, if you have legendary weapons, it gives you bonuses to so attack or something really like that. So it's not really RNG, it is RNG because you still have the random number generator with modifiers. With modifiers. It's RNG with modifiers because you're you're building up your skill set with your attributes and you're raising this, this, and that. And depend, depending on what kind of skills you have, you're going to do better than someone that doesn't have those skills. So it's not completely RNG. So that makes me feel better. I think we should. I think we should say it like that because it gives people an understanding that you can actually help yourself out in the rng aspect of it not just picking like one out of five it's gonna pick one out of five that has been racing for a while and that put into acceleration and that put into you know um gas mileage and so on and so forth it can be a very hard uh pill to swallow though like if if you're somebody who puts in all of the time and effort into upgrading your stats, your avatar and that sort of stuff. It, uh, the way RNG works is you will have bad streaks. Like you could put in thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours, and then you're going to lose 10 times in a row and you're going to flip the table. But um, is it really RNG or is it just non-manual? Like, is there another word that can better describe it? Because for me, RNG means no well, matter it, what, you're you're gonna get. It's like uh, you're. It's gonna pick whoever it wants. Yep. As as <laughs> as soon as the race starts, the outcome is already decided. So this yep. is just unplayable. It's unplayable, yeah, but, but it's skill based. It's a slot machine, basically. You're pushing no, a button on not, a slot though. machine. No, it's not though. It's not a slot machine because if I'm standing next to some girl named Irma, <laughs> but I like played for a while and I put. <laughs> I put in okay. certain skills that Irma yeah. didn't, the RNG is going to be in my favor. So it's not really like that. Because you could, you can't put skills into a slot machine. You can't, but the, the core functionality is, you know, your skills are, the skills might be something to do, like, and we don't know how it's going to play out. Maybe the skills um, reflects more on who you're going to race against. You know, it might nece well, not necessarily be I, related I just to the think outcomes. We need to be careful because for me, it would have it would have made me not want to participate in racing completely if skills didn't have yeah. a thing, a part of it. Now that I know that it's RNG, but skill based RNG, depending on who has what skills and and blah blah blah. Now I'm like, okay, I'm back in, <laughs> sort of thing. So my whole take is. You got to be more careful how you say it because then people are going to start hating on it without truly understanding it. 
You oh, get what I'm and saying? Right now. It's just straight up luck of the draw. Well, yeah, because we don't have destruction in there as well. Right. Which is good because yeah. you can't have destruction without the 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 prize. Yes. At the moment, I don't have a car, so I can't race. And it's yeah, not on mobile. Truck. And it's not on mobile, so I can't race. So He has a, he has a semi-truck. He's crying. No. I can't. Who has I'm a semi? Race my semi? I've got a semi. I minted one. What? Yes. We still have zero cars. Me zero. too. Zero zero. We feel so yes. bad for you, Ben. <laughs> yes. Well, we we got to see another. We got to see another mass minting, surely, of much cheaper cars. That you know, if they're putting this all out there, you're just kind of alienating so much of your user base. Yeah, like I don't mind getting a cheaper car and just grinding it up. The scale racing wise. against racing against other cheaper cars yeah, yeah or, or or i just put so much time into it and so much i'm able to put skills and attributes raise my attributes that i can go against like a series one lazy driver that hasn't put crap into his their car yeah. right you want a rat racer yeah <laughs> well, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put a baseball card in there. <laughs> well, when you first when you first play Gran Turismo, you're not racing a Lamborghini. You start off with a Toyota Yaris or something. You know, but this is let Gran us buy Turismo. let us buy Toyota Yaris's or whatever the <laughs> metaverse equivalent is. Yeah, I'll buy yeah. I'll buy a, a Kia and I'll yeah. put a thing on the back, soup it up, make it bounce. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it is interesting though. Like I know from when I coded games, the there's probably two lines of code to, you know, press forward to go fast, press back to go slow, turn right and left. That's a couple of lines of code compared to yeah, like as you say, like coding in a whole AI mechanic. It's yeah. a whole engine. Yeah. So yeah, I don't mind it being like like hands off as long as the hard work impact. I put into it. Yeah. 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 And that's actually what I'm excited about with Upland is the idea that they will be able to, you will be able to train your block explorer, right? And we saw Matsuda R just announced his M M B M Raceway, uh, BE Race Academy, right? And so he's already planning for being able to train yeah. up block explorers and, and help them get better and so forth, right? I know in Portage Park, we have the BE Academy, and he's thinking the same thing, right? Uh, Crown Handler. That's so, awesome, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, so there's definitely going to be academies for BEs to learn how to drive, right? And there's, I'm almost certain there's going to be modifiers to the car, right? Maybe being able to put better brake systems, maybe better exhaustion, exhaust systems or whatever it exactly. is. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that makes me excited. See that I'm now I'm back into it, just like, just like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Zach, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> for them to push, for them to push for a mainstream audience, um, yeah, doing skill based on online matchups is really hard to do because, like we talked about on the UDU podcast, with varying internet speeds and lag and that sort of stuff. It's that's a real can of worms to open. Imagine the support tickets and rage that they'd have to deal with. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, it, it, and you're right. I mean, the when you have uh, live action games where you're racing against people and there's real prizes on on the line and so forth. Yeah. Any lag, any delay, you know, do they? Are, what's your ping rate from wherever you are? I mean, yeah. It's so RNG was actually a very smart move for multiple reasons. And I just didn't realize how hard it was to implement RNG until I tried yeah. to do it myself. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and that's a good point too. If you're talking about, yeah, you're exactly right with prizes. And like, I'm I'm sure like many of the URL tracks, you know, it's going to be some pretty big, especially that first series or whatever, it's going to be some pretty big prizes on offer. Yeah. So we shall see. I know with the Midtown Terrace, I just off the top of my head, we'd probably have a, at least a one million prize pool, I, I would assume. You know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it. I don't expect that you'll have less than like five hundred thousand upics in in official URL kind of tracks, right? Yeah. And and I'm expecting it to be million and and maybe even multi million dollar prize. Uh, not dollars, not dollars. Upics, upics. Yeah. 
yeah. I do that all the time. I do that. He gets on my case. He gets on my case. Yes. yes. Not unless we we sign a deal with uh, FIA, FIA or something with F1. <laughs> yeah, well, it'll be interesting hey. to see how the whole sponsorship comes into play. It, it will be very interesting. That would be there. amazing, actually. We well, should start I've... emailing them back. <laughs> Part, so part of the reason I wanted to work with Upix World and Check Layer 2 is because trying to figure out how to do sponsorships, It's it's been one of the key things we've been doing at URL is trying to figure out how to do sponsorships. And trying to work that through Upland is proving to be a challenge only because of they have to protect themselves from different things. So being able to do it in layer two and blend layer one and layer two makes it possible to be able to actually have banner space. So in the sample that you saw, you saw the banners and it had like the sponsors, URL, Creedmore, uh, Upix World, uh, Buck, uh, Board Uplanders Club. And so they, we had banners with like the logos of the different sponsors. Well, in the future, we would be able to put advertisers on there. It's all about eyeballs, right? Can we yes. get eyeballs on those? Very nice. I love that. Anything that has to do with, like, you know, revenues mm -hmm. of income for the future, I'm for it. Yeah. We, we've also been able to do deals with uh, outdoor decor shops <clears throat> to, um, <laughs> to uh, where <laughs> they spawn, you know, they sell and, you know, we get a rev share as an official URL type. So like uh, there's the URL bleachers, right? And so we get a rev share of that. And so all of that would be then going into buying Upix for price pools. And so URL would sponsor, you know, would support the price pools. How, how is that working out? Like I know the manufacturing bottlenecks that we're experiencing has really thrown a lot of our plans into back to basics. Like, I imagine you kind of signed those deals before all of the actual mechanics were known. Now that manufacturing is actually massively restricted, has that? Are you having conversations about that, or putting in alternative strategies, or what's the deal there? Good news is we just cut the deals with the outdoor decor shops. The outdoor decor shops have to figure out how to sell them, but I do know some have done bulk sales, so like pre-sales. Yeah. And that's so scary. That's one way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oof. I mean, we can't even manufacture what we want to do, let alone taking on pre sale custom orders. That's, that would be, well, not custom orders. So imagine you're, you're producing a thousand of your uh, barbecue pit and you pre sell 500 to a wholesale, uh, to a retailer. Hmm. Yeah, that seems that seems scary to me. Yeah. Well, now you have to make sure you can deliver on inventory and so forth, and and it's outdoor decor shops definitely are clearing the way for a lot of other businesses in the future. And so, thank you, because <laughs> I yeah. know I plan to take advantage of everything you guys are learning. Yeah, well, even simple things like I just worked with Jennifer and the team for the last two weeks trying to get a a visual display glitch sorted out within the the um, sh shop front. It wasn't displaying the items properly, and that took two weeks of back and forwards for us to get something simple like that sorted out. So there's a lot of small things like that, and you're right, we're going through that teething process now, dealing with all that, so other people don't in the future. Very cool. Yeah. No, it, it's good for my future needs. I, I have yeah. bigger plans for the future. Nice. All right. Um, we've got a few more articles to touch on here. Should we dive in? Sure. Sure. Um, I don't even remember what they were. I'm trying to get Sully to sneak me a muffin because I'm starving. Don't run away, Dak. We still appreciate Dak, your, your biased opinion. Now. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> I have a cold. And so I have to mute every now and then. Yeah, I'm the same at the moment. I've been going on mute and snorting up some loogies. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you turn off the camera so people don't see the ugly. Uh, just... 
We're the worst show ever and we've got no <laughs> expectations here. So this here is actually a very interesting segue to what we're talking about with outdoor decor and selling off what is essentially NFTs in game for um, for Upland. So the article mm -hmm. here is how NFT royalties work and sometimes don't. Um are NFT royalties designed to offer artists a better business model? A closer look at how they work explains their true potential. So just as a bit of a quick synopsis, if, you, if you're not already aware, the established kind of mechanic is that any artist that creates and sells NFTs, they, for the lifetime of that product, unless it gets burnt, they will get a percentage payment kickback for any future sales. So mm -hmm. cheese, you, you get these. Oh, What's yeah. your setup? What's your setup on wax? Um, I was grandfathered into ten percent. I think now they nice. have it from like as high as six. Yeah, I haven't checked recently, but yeah, I get ten percent royalties. Yes, and for the sometimes don't work aspect, uh, we have raised this question with Upland multiple times now, and haven't been given an answer. And if you're not given an answer, the answer is probably no. Mm -hmm. Um we asked, are there going to be royalties patched into the mechanics for the sale of outdoor decor? It appears that the answer to that is no. Um, we, our, our artist D-Tech and Cheese also as the artists, they are creating art that is sold within the game as an outdoor decor NFT. Um, we get paid once and that's it. It seems very strange that there's no mechanic, there's no royalty mechanic at all involved with that. Um, the same goes for the the building structure ornaments. The people that have designed and submitted building structure ornaments, they don't get any royalties for that. And Again, that's it shame. seems like that's seems a like a real missed opportunity. So, I don't know. Okay, so I just wanted to jump in real quick on this. Yep. One of the things about perpetual good in the metaverse comes from the. So it was the idea that people could actually use NFTs and the smart contracts associated with them to allocate um, a percentage of the fees collected to a charity, right? And so that's where the whole concept of that, the, what I talk about with perpetual good in the metaverse came from was this very concept. Mm -hmm. And I know Shelter Group, I don't know if you guys have seen, but in Creedmoor, he started a new art um kind of um, series where he's actually um, giving a percentage to the artist and a percentage to Child Mind Institute. So. All right. All right. I, I get the whole charity thing. I, it's a good thing to do, but a lot of the artists that are starting, they kind of need the charity themselves. Like, like these are people that aren't really <laughs> doing well. In, like maybe some people who have, um how do you say mind troubles mind not, issues and they this is this is finally their platform to thrive on like they can't go outside they have what is it called mental health issues they're they're doing great work in the metaverse um these are people that i kind of look at and say they should be getting royalties it, like you know this is their time to shine sort of thing if you have it to give that's fine right but i don't say think, you have to i know i understand that but i'm saying in in regards to like like um like like charity is great but i think these artists that are starting out i think they kind of need their own kind of way of making it going forward so i will i will say this one Shelter Group mentioned that the artists, the person who creates the art, gets royalty from it. Yeah, it's Plus, like a split. It also it's split, right? Mm. And the other thing is, you don't necessarily need to do that if you're doing your own NFTs. But I will say, and just from the Creedmoor experience, the exposure you get as an artist for contributing to these charity type of events can actually help you either get whitelisted because of the art being sold. It can help you get your name out there and it could create, you know, goodwill that actually translates to people checking out your page and, and your wallet. Yeah. It, it's so, tricky. 
that that, that can be abused it's tricky like yeah. for example i'm not i you know nothing against shelter rock group but like like time is tricky. tricky it's tricky i like okay. <laughs> yes. um some a place like up upx world where it takes all right it, you don't get the royalties but you get um you get it turned into other stuff that can give you a secondary income as well. APs and that purchases. And that yeah. purchases. So basically they're kind of making up for taking away the royalties and they're a big name. Like I can understand going into something like that, but you, people just have to be careful working with individuals that they're not, you know, yeah. familiar with. And and such like that, just like no financial advice, no charity advice. <laughs> yes. Or in Upland's case, it's all a mute point because, as it says here, it appears that the technology is only as good as the platform's commitment to uphold it. So, you know, if 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 the conversation's not even being had, then yeah, it's kind of a mute point. Well, they dip their toe into charity work and stop bashing charities more cheese. I'm not. Stop bashing starving you. artists. Yeah, well, it's it's. I'm I, I know with from. You. I'm I know from with back, you. <laughs> I know from back when I was doing game development, I did a lot of. Um, I work with a lot of artists on that kind of revenue share model. Um, there was a lot of people that were taken advantage of by that. Like the the people who were did the rev share then went on and made millions. And didn't come because there was a lot of there's not lawyers involved with these people. These are people having one on one conversations and then just being taken advantage of. So, well, that's the tricky. beauty of the smart contract. Tricky. Yeah, that can take away from all that. Yep. Right. Because it's all in the blockchain and it's all automatic, uh, automated into the business logic for posting it. Now, I don't know how, and maybe Morchi, you can explain how this works. How do you actually set up a smart contract where you can get the rev share, the royalty? Um, so when I mint my NFTs, because I give a percentage to Ben, um, without Ben, we wouldn't have wine and cheese. So he is, he should get paid, you know, that's my feelings on it. <laughs> so I'm basically, you know, uh, sharing with Ben, what I do is I set up a Nefty, I, I mint an Atomic Hub, and then I put it in Nefty to do a drop. I do this for... Uh, a few reasons. Nefty is superior to Atomic Hub in this. You get Nefty bucks. So not only do you get an NFT, but you get like an incentive as well towards other NFTs uh, and discounts. And I'm able to share, like I have it set as a uh, Valentine because you could, you could name it. And I started, I started it last year when we did the valentine nft of us eating our hearts out um so i updated all of them and he gets 25 percent of every nft that i sell yeah it's basically using the tools that are provided by the platform yeah that's all okay. kind of like cheese is not sitting there coding a coding a contract herself yeah no and yeah, if the platform has that. no has no option well where, where look for another there? platform like because that's the yeah. that's a good thing you can mint on atomic hub but you can put your nfts on any platform you want and that's what i'm doing i'm doing yep. it in nefty because they have that um yeah option yeah it's just yeah. tricky like we're, we're creating uh, nfts for upland but we don't have that option within that platform which is i i think that's i think that's at best, a missed opportunity. At worst, it's you taking advantage of your your play base. I feel much, like so. I'm playing a very interesting game of chess with Dak right now. <laughs> and he's thinking of his next move. Meanwhile, I don't even person. know how to play chess. I just play checkers. So. <laughs> yes. You don't play Go? Huh? No, that's that's way beyond my skill set. Go, jeez. Go. That's like the the black and white stone version, or is that the kanji version, the tiles? No, it's the uh, black and white. Yeah, it's like the. It's Asian also chess. known as a fellow. Yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, th this article goes on to outline what royalties are all about, and that sort of stuff. Um. 
Here we go, Cheese. Is there evidence that <laughs> NFT royalties offer sustainable revenue to to artists, which is what you're kind of alluding to? Um, I get them all the time. It, it, yeah. It's not much, but like every so often, it's like, hey, you have some, um, you could claim this. And it's like three wax here, five wax there, depending on how long I take to claim it. Yep. So it's actually really, really good. Yes, I don't know. Yep, for I'm a missing. nobody like me <laughs> well it's it's different too like you you're not you're not buying and selling nfts to pay your bills this is your kind of entertainment platform yeah so so you getting those little kickbacks that's great and then i get a percentage of that too that's great because then it allows us to you know in buy nfts of all of these other projects that we're interested in if exactly if we, if we didn't have that what do you call it a drip if we didn't have that drip of wax coming through well there's no way i'd be buying all these other nfts it just yeah. wouldn't happen and and my drip mostly goes to my ram because <laughs> yeah. the more nfts you own under your collection the more ram you need to hold them and then yeah. Like also there's a twenty there's a twenty dollar fee. Like nobody knows the, the 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 amounts of money you and I put into our wine and cheese name. Like we're not making yes. any money. No. <laughs> if anything, we're losing money, but it's fun. Like I yeah. enjoy doing this. And like Ben said, we're gonna keep doing this until we can. And like like um I just like people who want or need to create the nfts to survive like you said they they can they can worry about the charity stuff later but they need to take care of themselves they need to set themselves up There's if you also, could do it that's great like i'm yeah. i'll help like i'll donate to you whatever but yeah and there's also the i guess well i'll just speak to this next paragraph which highlights the point i want to make it says here while large projects with outside revenue sources can afford royalties individual artists cannot to illustrate the nft collection fidenza by tyler hobbs has made a total of 3999 ethereum in royalty revenue wow. according to flips finance the initial mint price was 0.17 ethereum meaning now this is the important point royalty revenue exponentially outweighed mint proceeds yeah. So think of us, think of us from the outdoor decor percentage. We're opening up next week. We have our sales, but that's it. That's our one chunk of the pie. That's but it. those NFTs might be sold for millions and millions and millions of UPEX. And we don't get any percentage of that at all. It's it's all going to upland via the the um the fees, the buyer and seller fees. That's that's not good. That's not. I'm going to put my wine hat on for the wine and cheese. It's 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 not good, and it's really for in this kind of space and what they're pushing for. It's not good enough. It's not. So I don't know. Maybe it's one of these cases where it's because it's such a new system that will come in time. Um, it's not just myself as one of the outdoor decor better members that have raised this question and are kind of scratching their head. Um, there's several of us in there that are just like, you know, what what the hell? Because it's it's a fundamental foundationary aspect of what nfts are especially yeah. for the the creators so it's a weird one agree and i mean ultimately like the more the more income that we generate that we would potentially generate from that it's going to go back into the community it's giveaways and prizes and exactly that the yeah. other thing so yeah it's not especially for yourself and myself like i said we're, we're not this is not a paying the bills um sort of situation so i don't know yeah royalties is a massive massive thing um, yeah, yeah so, it really is anyway. like i yeah you gotta be careful so that's, like that's our kind of like like depending on like you don't really want to go to an individual you want to go to a well-reputed place that has it in their white papers, what they're planning to do with your art, what can you further get from that and whatnot. Look into your options. Some people, you know, don't want to be hands-off and that's fine. Like you do your art, you give it to somebody, they do the work for you. They give you future opportunities for money. That's fine. 
but make sure you yep. pick the right person. Make sure you do your due diligence. Absolutely. All right. So that's kind of, we've gone down into the, the fuddy, the doom and the gloomy. We're going to flip it around and you're talking about hands off. Well, we're going to flip the switch now and we're going to go hands on. We're going to go hands <laughs> on. This metaverse now involves deep and thoughtful conversations with AI and alien girls. What? What is this, a sex convo? I don't know. Let's find out. This is this is not positive. The metaverse now allows users to converse with artificial intelligence, NPCs, improving user experience, says Sasha Titjanko, Deputy CEO and Art Director of Sensorium. Have you heard of Sensorium? No. I'm wondering if there's alien boys like and why do they say girl as if it's a like underage like an alien woman an alien lady that just kind of seems greasy Ooh, you could talk to alien girl all right let's find out you can have a really deep thoughtful and contextual conversation with our ai she said with our virtual beings we will have different types we have aliens you can talk to an alien girl wow sensorium is an <laughs> Look at your face. Sensorium is an innovative Web3 company that creates immersive, out-of-this-world experiences together with some of the leading artists of today. Yeah, that does seem greasy. It seems greasy. And now you're, now you're showing Dubai. Like, I can only yeah. imagine. Oh, my God. Sensorium, a metaverse company, needs to be proactive when it comes to metaverse regulation. Oh, here we go. The subject of copyrights, blah, 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 blah. This is talking about royalties as well, user theft. Well, this is just all blah blah blah. It doesn't actually say what it is. It's it's yeah. it's it's a sex sex talk. Like you know how you used to have them on on the phone. Well, now you can have them so in the metaverse. It's do Seth X Machina. That's the movie, isn't it? It's all that coming to life. Is that the movie? <laughs> I, is that the one where the guy falls in love with the robot and the robot tricks him and ends up? Oh, don't Cheers, tell me. I haven't seen it. I want to see it. Is that the comedy with the phone? No, it's not a comedy. Oh, it's not? Do Sex Machina. Yeah, it's on, I think it's on Netflix. You oh, you got to send me out. the name. That sounds interesting. Ooh. Now, oh, speaking of that, before I forget, did, did you watch, did you watch Nobody yet? No, I haven't. I keep trying to remember and then... And then I'm like, I want to see a family guy because it's quick and then get back on a computer and work. I got to see yes. it though. Let me, I'm going to. Well, you, def you definitely got to watch Do Sex Machina. Let me just double check. I don't know. Talk about something while I check that. Uh, er, I'm typing what? to my. <laughs> I'm typing to my oh. husband to remind me to watch Nobody. Me and too Do much. Sex Machina. No. How do you spell that? What, do sex machina? Yeah. Maybe it's not that. Why am I... Why have I got that in my brain? Movie. Somebody's... Ah, uh, it's called X... X <laughs> machina. It's just called X machina. E-X underscore M-A-C-H-I-N-A. X machina. <laughs> X machina? Yeah. All right. I got it. Sent. Yeah, you got to check that one out. That's I watched that recently, and that was, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's, I know I promised, I promised Lily for nobody, so we got to do that one first, but I definitely will get the other one in because I like that sort of stuff. It's sort of like Electric Dreams. Have you seen that one? That's from the 80s. Oh, man. I love that movie back in the day. That was amazing. That's a very Miles, cool. Miles, why'd you yeah. lie to me? Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching that when I was a kid. Well, I was literally. Yeah, a kid. we were yeah, kids when that, that came cool. out. I think I was like six or something. 1986, yes, 87. Well, I would have been 10. Yeah. Yeah, no, this is. Maybe if, if we just take the creepiness aspect out of it, I, I mentioned this in. It was one of the clips I did for, it might have been last week's one and cheese show. The the end of the human race. Yes, <laughs> is this another good version humans of that? suck? <laughs> <laughs> we fucking suck, Ben. 
we're Jeez. we're no good we're a freaking virus oh. on the world we need to god i thought Jeez. we were going to end this show on a positive <laughs> i've got one i've got one last article hopefully that can what? hopefully this last hopefully this article can get us out of the doom and what gloom if the metaverse explodes there's no bombs in the metaverse there's no well there okay. could be what if the metaverse explodes? Why would it explode? All right, your, your perspective. Pers- take it away. Your perspective shaped how that headline read. Either way, I invite you to dream bigger. Oh, I get it. Like, what if it explodes in a good way? Or we took it as bad because we're negative. I watched a human being from planet Earth suit up in a haptic feedback suit, pick up a laser gun, put on a VR headset, and immediately leap into a wall. <laughs> 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 I witnessed this through my phone screen, and I was so shocked. I felt like I was there, fully immersed in that human's virtual world, and their very, very real pain. I need to see this video. That was yeah. when I knew the metaverse was going to change the world. Now, my oldest son <laughs> Bodhi, he, he has been to one of these. He's been to one of these massive factories where it's set up as a virtual reality space, and oh, it's so, so weird cool. to watch. They're running around with their guns and their haptic suits and their VR goggles on. But all you can hear, it's like they're playing tennis. All you can hear is their <laughs> shoes squeaking on the floor. So, <laughs> but for that guy or girl or whoever it was to just jump straight into a wall is hilarious. And I, did, did you see now they've got some um, early test versions of gimbals? So it's like you step on this thing and you've kind of strapped in at the hips and you can run in place. It's like a treadmill yes, almost. I it's saw three, that. three, like, 360 direction. I saw that years ago on the Shark Tank, like maybe over five oh, years really? ago. And I looked at wow. the prices. They're actually not bad. That's why I wanted a basement um, to, to have like a game room because I would totally buy that. Mm. And you're like running around and you could squat, you could jump. And like like the, the bottom moves kind of like a roll-on deodorant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's yes. so awesome. Well, so. we're past the tipping point as a human species. We throw around the terms like techno sapiens. I love that. I've never heard that before. Transhumanism. I've never heard of that before. That's awesome. Techno sapiens. I love it. And life extension that will radically evolve during our tenure on this emerald and azure rock hurtling through space. If I want off this pale dot, I can pay a billionaire to fly me to the moon. Or you could just put your VR headphones on, headset yeah, on. That's what it's going to say. My computer's lagging like a beast. <laughs> uh, i got too many tabs open. As for all the chaos <laughs> back on the ground, the rest of us are escaping into photorealistic fantasy worlds behind eye-tracking headsets, right? You know the answer to that one. That's why no one should be afraid of the metaverse, and everyone should realize that the metaverse is already here and has been for a very long time. Hello, that's what we've been saying. It's just that for many of us, like a rush of euphoria, the metaverse has suddenly come into focus. There we go. Take that away. The metaverse isn't any one thing or entity. But wait, shares of meta just tanked over 24%. Does that matter? Is the metaverse over? No. Everything is business as usual. In fact, while such value shedding is never positive, and I'm not making my opinion on meta here, I think one thing is clear. Our market is simply hearing a loud signal that people want the future of the internet to be different. For better or for worse, this is the first time tech-savvy humanity has universally agreed on something in a long while. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, the metaverse has taken a total beating from clickbait. Let's demystify. What is it? What does metaverse mean? Let's throw down some basic terms for measure. The metaverse is the future of the internet, full stop. That's the high level. It's not a company, a single piece of hardware, or a game. Yeah, that's what we've that. been saying. We've been saying that since the start of the show. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, instead, the metaverse is a whole landscape of immersive technologies coming together to create wildly hyper-stylistic digital experiences for everyone. Or it can be renewing your driver's license. It can be as boring and inane as that. Um, 
Just like the internet of the last two decades or any market, thousands of companies working on thousands of technologies will converge their efforts and dreams to scale a beautiful, new, ever-expanding virtual world and all the colossal economic opportunities that come along with it. I like this article. This is a great That's, article. It's really good. Yep. Yeah. The metaverse is how companies will finally take the power of their marketing overhead back into their own hands and define how they engage with their audiences. And on the flip side, the audiences, the customers are going to have greater control over, you know, what, um, what data they're going to essentially give to companies and that can be monetized and all that sort of stuff as well. So it's the future of how artists can enjoy unbridled self-expression and stay connected to the fans and hopefully make a revenue per share, share percentage um, or royalty percentage, I should say. It's a feature of how anyone can travel anywhere virtually to have new experiences connected with loved ones, meet new people and collaborate on anything they love to do. And that may include talking to alien women on a crazy platform. Yes. <laughs> Shoot. Forget the woman. I'll talk to you. Just give me some money. I have a conversation, but it's not going to go anywhere uh, greasy. Absolutely. <laughs> I say this because I've seen it. Over the course of the last year at Terra Zero Technologies, our Metaverse studio has enjoyed the common fortune in this industry of having more and more companies come forth with greater ambitions and interest to explore and activate. Yeah, that's what that's what we've been saying. The more the more big name com com companies are getting involved, the more big name companies will get involved. Um, last week we talked about McCain fries. Like, who would have thought that a a potato chip manufacturer would be, you know, investing into Web3 games in Roblox and that sort of stuff. And I did say, did you see Hawaiian Fish? Yes. I was just going to say, like, I love yeah. that he actually dived in deeper to the hole and, and actually tried it out with his son. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, like, it makes me want to just, like, oh, gosh, I'm so busy. There's so much to do. There's There's not enough time to do every thing that the metaverse has to offer which is awesome like you yeah. always want there to be too much not too little well we're we're in this little space and we're trying to get involved in this thing that thing that thing mm -hmm. but there's a tide there's, there's a tidal wave of the metaverse where everything's going to be web3 everything that we do on the internet is going to merge to web3 so it's yeah that's yeah, I, I like this article too because it, it's a good reality check and getting people up to speed. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just about, you know, VR headsets and getting a headache after you crashed into a wall and that sort of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's like saying, like, you know, whatever you know about the metaverse, there's so much more to it than what you know. And it's just kind of inviting you to, you know, go out there and explore it more because like it's like how people say oh i don't like this but then they try it served a different way and they're like oh wow i never knew this was so good yeah so here it says here the metaverse opens a gateway to communicate the heart and soul of any business in a very tangible way you know those commercials where a woman raises a puppy into adulthood and then the dog saves that woman from a fire so she can meet an attractive firefighter and they live happily ever after only to fade to a credit card logo. I just made that point up. I hope that's not a literal commercial script. This who We'll have to check out who wrote this. This is good. But the point is you were supposed to notice in the beginning of the commercial that the woman swiped her credit card to buy her puppy dog food. The message, she could only do that because she paid off her credit card every month and she enjoys a fantastic APR on top. Because of that, she gets to live. She gets to live. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, this is cool. Oh, my God. Feel the disconnect. Anyway, now squish yeah. that between six. This article ads. just goes on. Yeah, this article goes Wait, on. Wait, I want to read on, the on. rest. It's so good. Let me just read that. Com that com uh, blah, 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 blah. Feel the disconnect. Now squish that between 60 other ads as users doom scroll and ask yourself if you really believe your audience will remember that message without seeing it a hundred times. Yeah. No, I'm a big fan of, of funny commercials and cute commercials. I never realize what it's for usually, but I just love seeing it. Well, that's um, Maya, my wife and I, we, we play that game every night. Like, 
we get to the end of an ad and we're like, or halfway through an ad, we play the game. What the fuck is this about? <laughs> and then it gets to the end of the ad and you're just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, this, this article, what if the metaverse explodes was by Brandon F Johnson and it's on gritdaily.com. It's a, it's a beauty. And like I said, yeah. it does go on and on and on. It's quite a lengthy article. So I definitely recommend you go on over and he's a great check that writer out. good for you brandon link is in the description see look we pulled it around we went high we went low we he went really it. low yeah i don't know what happened to jack i did want to say thank him for jumping in he's oh wild. he had to take his daughter to the pool oh well there you go yeah splish splash all right cheese i think that's probably going to do us for a day um, yeah, I and I just want to thank you for episode. getting the articles. I want to give you props for that. That was awesome. They were great articles. Always fun. No worries. Um, yes. And yeah, thank, thanks again for Dak for jumping in. And thank you, that Dak. just happened to be good timing. So we got show crashed again. Nice. <laughs> I love that. I love the crashes. And we might have a guest on next week. So if you're listening and thinking, well, I might just get on and show crash the one or two show. Yeah, perhaps not next week. <laughs> So here we go. We ready? We're ready. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Go ahead, get your pick you up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your pick you up. Go ahead, get your pick you up. Go ahead, get your pick you up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your pick you up. Go ahead, get your pick you up. This entertainment production is brought to you today by the Samurai Aquatics and Decor MetaVenture. Scan that QR code or click that link in the description and dive yourself headfirst into the Samurai Aquatics Discord server to pleasure your peepers on our current and future range of outdoor decor.